chances are you've come across a relational database. So I'd like to open this tutorial with a short discussion about the features of our typical relational database and those of a graph database, in this case Neo4j. This should help give some context of what Neo4j offers in comparison to a relational database. So let's get started by looking at the typical features of a relational database. It has an easy query language called SQL, or Structured Query Language. It's schema based. They store data in tables made up of rows and columns, similar to a spreadsheet, and the tables can be joined together via a mechanism of primary keys and foreign keys. Relational databases support full ACID, or full ACID compliance, which stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. Most relational database implementations these days allow you to export the data within your database in a variety of formats. By comparison, graph databases offer very similar functionality, but the underlying structure of the database is very different. Graph databases offer a query language called CQL or Cypher. If you know SQL, then you'll find learning CQL very easy and you'll pick it up very quickly. Neo4j in particular follows what is known as a property graph data model. This is just a fancy way of saying that data is held as key value pairs. If you think to other programming languages like Java for example, you have the map collection and that contains key value pairs. So you have a key which is associated with the value. Well, it's exactly the same within a property graph database. When you don't have classes, you have nodes and relationships, and both nodes and relationships can contain data in the form of key value pairs. Neo4j supports for ACID or ACID, same as relational databases do. It also supports importing and exporting of data in a variety of formats, including JSON and XLS format. Neo4j provides some excellent support for various programming languages. In fact, for Java, it supports two APIs, the first being for CQL or Cypher and the other being a native Java API. Neo4j provides support for JavaScript and various JavaScript frameworks such as jQuery and Node.js. And best of all, it provides a REST API and that provides access for a variety of programming languages from JavaScript, PHP, Java, Java with Spring and the list goes on. So, what are some of the advantages of graph databases, such as Neo4j? Well, they make it easy to represent connected data. What do I mean by that? They make it both easy and fast to traverse or navigate large amounts of data that has some sort of relationship. Data that doesn't fall into natural structure can be easily represented in a graph database. Cipher commands are human readable and very easy to learn. The property graph data model is simple, yet still very powerful. The basic building blocks are nodes and relationships, and they can contain data in the form of key value pairs or properties. Unlike the relational model, there's no need for complex and costly joins to retrieve connected or related data. Instead, the graph database uses a natural concept of relationships. Relationships in a graph naturally form paths. Querying or traversing the graph involves following those paths, and because of the path-oriented nature of the graph data model, the majority of path-based operations are extremely efficient. So let's look at that in a bit more detail, because here is where the true strength of graph databases lie. In the relational data model, one of the most costly joins to create is the many-to-many. -many. In this example, we have a student table and a course table. We can't join the two tables together directly. We need to create a separate table, sometimes known as a link table. The purpose of the link table is mainly to contain foreign keys from the related data in the other two tables. So here, for example, we have a student, Jane, linked to many courses. Either enrolled on the course or attending the course, the actual relationship meaning is not implied and it's not clear. We just have unique keys posted to an arbitrary table. On the other side of the relationship, we have a course, and that can contain students associated with it. 
So in our example here, we have a spring course, which has Jane and Gillian enrolled or registered or attending. Again, we're not quite sure what the relationship meaning is because it's not specified. A common architectural technique these days is to separate our concerns. For example, we separate our persistency layer from our application layer. And if you're using an object-based language in your application tier, this leads to another issue of the object relational impedance mismatch. In other words, the mismatch between mapping relational database tables to object-oriented classes. In the Java world, for example, there are specific frameworks like Hibernate. They try to take a lot of the difficulties associated with mapping relational tables to objects. Many of the frameworks are very good and do much of the heavy lifting for us, but there will always be a compromise or a trade-off, and this is a very real headache. On the other hand, there's something new, which has a natural affinity with the object world, and so makes mapping almost a non-event. As mentioned before, Neo4j consists of nodes and relationships. A node is a first-class citizen, and can contain zero or many labels. A label is similar to an entity type. A relationship is also a first-class citizen, and can contain only one type. Both nodes and relationships can contain zero or many properties, and a property is made up of key value pairs. This flexibility and connectedness provided by relationships allows for a much greater affinity to application tier languages that use objects. Because of that, it makes the need for frameworks that address the relational mismatch redundant. So our previous example of a relationship many-to-many -many mapping would look like this in a graph database. We have our students and we have our courses and this is how we're linked together via relationships. And you'll notice that the relationship has the type of enrolled. This makes it much clearer and the understanding much clearer than having just foreign keys associated together in a table. Now in the coming tutorials, I'll be using this very example of students and courses and I want to show how easy it is to build your very own Neo4j graph database and what's more, how to access the data and update it using the Cypher language or CQL.